Not surprisingly, the Pentagon's second argument is also in contradiction with its own data. Although it is true that the heavier particles of a disintegrated DU round remain close to its impact zone, a study done in the 70s by the Air Force determined that the lighter particles are suspended in the air and may travel long distances by means of wind currents. Not always the wind is responsible for taking DU dust into populated areas. DU rounds have been used regularly to bomb urban zones, something obvious during the 2003 attack on Baghdad. Depleted uranium radioactive dust and fragments were detected with a Geiger counter by a Japanese video team just days after the city fell. No, no. But the third argument is the most astounding. According to data from the U.S. Veterans Affairs Office, more than 300,000 veterans from the first Gulf War, roughly half of all of the soldiers that took part in that conflict, have reported medical problems. 11,000 of which have died. The symptoms they show, loosely referred to as the Gulf War Syndrome, include immunological system problems, fatigue, migraines, rashes, tumors, and even congenital malformations in the veterans' offsprings. The causes of such diverse illnesses are not clear, but a number of signs point to DU exposure as the most plausible explanation in many of these cases. Certainly, the Pentagon acknowledges the reported illnesses, but quickly opts to blame other toxic agents soldiers were exposed to in the first Gulf War, such as chemicals from the Iraqi arsenal, experimental vaccines, or smoke from burning oil fields. And yet, many of the reported symptoms are identical with those of known cases of contamination with uranium dust. In other war scenarios where those other toxic agents were absent, but a similar syndrome appeared, there seems to be no other explanation. Some European soldiers who participated in NATO operations in Bosnia and Kosovo report a similar Balkan War syndrome. And then, after the invasion of Iraq in 2003, the very same symptoms have reappeared among many of the coalition soldiers, a story that New York policeman Herbert Reed and seven other veterans deployed in Iraq know quite well. I have these rashes that are, are reoccurring. I have blood in my urine, blood in my stool. I have constant diarrhea. Uh, I have muscle and joint aches. I have nerve damage. My left foot is totally numb. My left hand is numb partially from this finger, these three fingers right here. And they come and go, and it gets more intense sometimes. Um, I can only walk um, maybe a half a block without my leg you know, dragging. I, I take um, 60 milligrams of uh, methadone every six hours. I take 15 milligrams of uh, morphine every six hours. I take four milligrams of uh, tizanidine every four hours. I have respiratory problems. I sleep with a, a CPAP machine with a mask that pushes oxygen into my lungs at night so I can breathe. If not, I don't rest well. I'm up all night. The doctors at Walter Reed said, there is no test for depleted uranium, that it was all in our heads, and um, next thing we knew, we were seeing psychiatrists. But something in their heads told them to look for a second opinion. They decided to take a test in a German lab, which came out positive for uranium in all cases, a result that allowed them to sue the U.S. Army in a New York court. They got sick from serving there. Even worse is the situation for thousands of Iraqi civilians. According to data from medical authorities in Basra, southern Iraq, between 1991 and 2005, the incidence rate of cancer in the city almost doubled, and many individuals present multiple cancer cases. But children are by far the greatest potential victims. They play around and inside destroyed tanks, unwitting about the hazards that lie in their playgrounds. And sometimes their traits remember those of the U.S. veterans' children. I had an opportunity to go to Iraq, and I specifically asked the Ministry of Health uh, that I told them I want to go, I want to, go to these uh, children's wards and uh, cancer yeah. wards. What I saw, it almost makes me cry. Uh. 
a lot of spinal problems and, uh, and a lot of uh, stillborn deaths. And uh, sometimes the baby would be born just fine. The baby would be born, looked healthy. And six months later, the kid's got a big, big old thing coming out of his head. Uh, or his eyes started to close and bulges started coming out of his face. Uh, and uh, shortly after that, they die. Not even the unborn are safe. Lab tests on rats have found that DU can be deposited in the male's genitals, increasing the chance of sperm damage. My buddy um, that we met at um, Walter Reed, Gerard Matthew, he got his wife pregnant, and him and his wife went to the doctor. The doctor told him that his daughter was being born with an anomaly of the right hand, which he had no fingers on that hand. Many soldiers thinking that maybe they they might get contaminated, start going, started going to sperm banks. The military reported it and said, well, they were doing it, they were going to sperm banks just in case they got killed. Then their wife could get artificial insemination and then she could have the, the man's baby after he was gone. Well, that's not really why the soldiers were going. The soldiers were going because they saw what happened in the first Gulf War and they didn't want to end up having uh, deformed children. In another chilling data from Basra's medical authorities, the incidence rate of newborn infants presenting malformations has increased at an alarming rate of more than 500% since the 1990s, and the degrees of the anomalies seen in both Iraq and Afghanistan are appalling. But the U.S. and some of its NATO allies decry all reasonable questioning of the use of DU weapons as some kind of strategic propaganda against their military interests. Propaganda or not, the Pentagon has quite bothered itself in 2008 by moving 6,700 tons of DU contaminated sand from its Camp Doha base in Kuwait to a toxic waste processing facility in Idaho, something that Time magazine included in one of its top 10 underreported stories of the year. <laughs> 